Good afternoon, everyone. X marks the spot. Chesky Krumlov. Would you build fortification walls with access to the windows? Or was it a mud flood? 1700s look. Garden center. Suddenly they're unburying, knocking doors into the windows. I always put access with a stairwell to my invaders as well. Unless it was mud. Flood basin in brown color and if it did flood it would back up against that cliff face and force itself onto the fort do we see it in the 1400s this is where it would have deposited original 1400s look at that curved wall here it is wait it's partially filled in what happened what time was it with the time dial they rebuilt it in 1551 the reset the galactic cross and they're energizing of our Earth's atmosphere. And starting you off here, you culture vultures, double-headed eagle, Czech Republic. Moving over to the coat of arms, Chesky Krumlov. Yeah, it's a gallery, but the center is the iconography you're looking for. X marks the spot. A lot of trails over Czech Republic. And another X marks the spot. A lot of treasure to be found in this country. I found myself in Chesky Krumlov. Knew there was a castle there that was a fort along this river. And it seemed to be inundated with a massive flood at one time. Decided to head over there on a bus and a train and see what we could find. Everywhere you look, you get these classic images. It is a UNESCO heritage site right here, location Czech Republic, south. Now, the story goes that it was founded in 1253 AD, which would have been right past the collapse at around 1200 with different dynasties and kingdoms around the planet. So that timeline matches with collapse and reset. Mud flows, perhaps, because we look at the basin here. Anywhere that you see that earth color is the flood plain. The dark blue dot in the center is where the old town is. And if you were to have some sort of massive flood, thousands of times larger than what we expect today, that would come rolling through. And where do you think the mud, sand, and silt would deposit itself? And plus, the boulders rolled with that if it was large enough. It would spin right along that cliff face on the left there and find itself smack dab into the fort, just layer caking along the entire riverbank. If you dig it out, it could be terraces now, just like we see. Is that purposely built or was that inundated with debris flows that they're still cleaning out? This is what we'll explore. And if we're back into the 12 to 1300s depictions here of Families now uniting in bond to expand their power and influence. Wilhelm Rosenberg rebuilt the Gothic Castle 1551. So that does give us an indication of a date where there could have been a reset. You don't rebuild unless something's broken. 1551, we saw that in Verona, Italy, also 1550s, a massive change in river topography. Going to Lake Garda, looking out of the castle to the original part of the town from the 1400s, 1407 original build here on the cathedral. If we look at this painting from circa 1727 or so, it shows you the cathedral itself right there front and center with walls. I wanted to focus in on a couple of things. This rounded curvature wall with those archways in there. And also in the front of the cathedral, you notice more of an onion dome as well as others. Onion dome sort of looks like a candle flame versus what we normally see in this period of time with that vertical spire. Notice the difference. over there they're just flying by I can't believe it no way spam call all the way out here while we're shooting on location oh look how many calls we already got today oh that's all spam right there miss calls 
you know, just like you, sometimes I don't even want to answer the phone anymore because, you know, these kind of calls are continuously rolling in. Very few ways to handle this. Takes you an enormous amount of time. So let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Aura. You know, plus these data brokers and they're consolidating all the information they can find about you. Have you been to Google to look for yourself? They have all these previous places that you work, have your previous employers, addresses, phone numbers at times. And then there's Aura, an easy to use app that gives you all the tools to keep your identity, your privacy safe online. Aura scans for your personal information that's out on the web. And it does the work of multiple different apps and softwares. And every time you look online, there's some new information that's been scraped about you. I want that all removed. But to do that as an individual, do all the paperwork, that's going to take years. But with Aura, there's just one click and they do the hard lifting for you. Because information privacy is becoming a big deal. Click on that link in the description box below. Aura.com forward slash adapt 2030. Try it two weeks free or click on the QR code left side right there. Get protected. And now on with the video. Do you think they were just fancifully putting candle tops on top or is that what they really saw? We're looking at the same exact location down river. You'll see the walls in front. You'll see some of the archways there. And what was I looking at up close? These are my own images. Those archways are filled in somehow now, aren't they? Now, if we look at the large amount of rock in the front, you might say, well, yeah, they just built on top of that. But why would they go to the trouble of putting the archways in the same exact locations? But how were they able to build outside of that in the 1400 jet? If they did rebuild, it would looks like this after. Now, if you take your attention along the wall, just before that gray retaining wall, that sort of was a star shape-ish, if that was indeed mud up there, that causeway halfway up there, the archway, would have been stairs and they could have unloaded vessels there. Obviously, this became disused. But through history, everything does look the same. And if we look down the walls, we'll see the archways disused as well. They were filled in with something, mud and debris and such magnitude to clean it out. It just was built over instead of repairing it. Hey, looking further back, knowing there's been problems with the river that have absolutely destroyed parts of the town, we see seriously damaged by ice flows in 1830. Although the Dalton minimum was during that time, say 1815 to 1830, would that have anything to do with extreme ice flows on the river? That just doesn't happen today. Rendering of the castle itself, you can see clearly the square basin with the windows visible on what would be rock. We'll come back and take a look at that. So we'll bring you back into the early 1920s here and you see the retaining wall along the regular edge of the city along the river there. Again, we're taking a look at who builds fortifications for a castle like this where the rock goes right up to your window. Hey, welcome to the Marauders on many a place. You can see all the left and the right there, the buildings. You can walk right up to the windows and crawl in. Wow, that's so defensible. And somehow these walls were washed away and you can actually see the mud flow and debris. And if you go further upstream, you can see where the wall was past tense. So it seems like it is a thing for massive amounts of water to wash parts of the city away in the fortifications. And you can see why they continually need to rebuild. In addition, huge amount of tunnels underground city. Can you say these signs are everywhere? Do not go in. This is under the castle and different parts of the periphery walls, that image I showed you there from 1929, goes on the other side of the riverbank under through the castle here. And you know what it's like with those old castles, there's passageways everywhere. So what I wanted to draw your attention to was the change of amount of debris that you can see scraped away from the wall. Now, why would they do that? If it was part of the original building materials, why would they take it away now and try to resurface it and reface it, do you think? It's a great question to ask. So the destruction patterns fingerprinted here. I'll take you over to the front where the castle spire is. Do you build fortifications where enemies can walk in your windows? I don't think so, but I'll take you to the background there. Look at the amount of debris that leads right up to the windows in several areas where you can walk right in. Enemies never think about walking in a window where there's a place built right to the window. They never do it. You know, that was just a thing back then. And if we look at the amount of debris that's not there any longer, 
Why has it been removed and Castle refaced if it was part of the original building materials? These are the kind of questions I was asking, like, wait, you can clearly see there's not nearly as much as it was even in the 1920s. And if we go back further in time, and this night view here shows quite a bit of that center area had been excavated out in modern times. And uh, with my own camera again, since I was there, and I'm interested in this type of thing, these are my own images, close-up shots of the rock that remains or substrate that was perhaps liquefaction thrust, something like this. I'm not sure exactly. That's why I'm doing the video. You see square building blocks within there too. So it just doesn't seem like it's a natural formation. Those of you who know about shockcrete and different types of ways to stabilize rock faces, etc. This is what we're looking at here. Uh, they put those concrete barriers in and different glimpses of it. And very cleanly, some of this is hand hewn to make more of a form fit, I guess. And there's quite a bit of debris that has been removed over the last couple of centuries. I'll let you decide on what you think about that. Football club, Chesky, Krumlov, thanks for your flyer. I did photograph it here. I need the image, but look how much extra debris is. That has been removed, clear as day. Why are they removing the debris? Or where did it come from that it was extra is the question. And here's another great shot from 1899. Ice on the river. Retaining walls are still in place in some areas, but as we move forward here, it really starts to get girthy. They started to beef up the river defenses there. I like taking you through the past. So let's compare. The late 1700s with the early 1900s. I'll let you stop the screen here and take a look. But what I do notice is the spires, that the height of them have been removed. And you'll see another building has been put in place between the two highest of the spires that we consider the cathedral of the castle where the damsel in distress would hide out. But the amount of rock also has been sculpted and you see it's been more flattened in the bottom. Over that 150 years, they were also working to remove some of this debris. And top, you can see there's a little tiny bridge there. And on the bottom, they've removed all the debris and put what it looks like classical Roman archways in its place. There's been a lot of earthwork to remove this out. It wasn't, in my opinion, there in the original construction. Go back to the middle 1700s and I want to take you straight to the middle where it looks like gardens in between the buildings of layers of rock along there. Easily discernible. Gardens and orchards inside the river walls. And what do you think would be in place today of that? Do you think? We'll zoom in. Then stepping forward from the 1700s, like I say, back into 1890s here. We're looking at that building again. You can see the archway is completely covered there along the building. Go to the spire and just go left that first four floor, well, three and a half floor building. That seems to be covered on the bottom there. And what does it look like today? Oh, they've excavated it. Those windows is what you saw. That mud layer was all the way up to the windows. And if you look to the left, you'll see that what looks like a terrace. If you draw a line, it goes directly across there. Again, I'm wondering if we go back in five or 10 years, how much more of this will be excavated. So with my camera, I started to take a few shots. It's caught my interest also. You're looking at the debris pile against the uh, castle on the left, then you're looking straight into, what well, looks like there was some sort of debris there and it's been taken away, excavated, and it's left the marks on the building. And whatever that was doesn't seem to keep the paint as well or the, the facade facing job. And if we zoom in a little bit, why did they knock a door where the window was unless they needed it? And I said, wait a minute, what is that below there? Oh, wait, that's the original doorway below that. So I'm wondering what is also at another layer beneath, because you can see it's brick, 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 and then rock. There's a whole different building layer, building technique, a subfloor below it. Tell me about that one. And a glimpse into some of the reconstruction. You can see older uh, rocks are at the bottom as you head down the stairwell, and that's clearly defined as was a mud flow mark that has been removed in some reason that the touch-ups are not finished or not sticking correctly and we also see it with the bottom layering it's just brick brick and then suddenly it's a hodgepodge and then the bottom layer turns into stone now those metal frames around there those were just thrown together that was for sure not part of the original construction and again who builds like this i'm just asking as a common sense question you're trying to have a fortified defense position who builds like this? 
where your defense walls come right up to windows that are accessible by ladder and even that smaller window hey i could push somebody up if i was to grab their feet that's just insane and then also do you have defense positions that run right up and have doorways that accessible now over the time obviously it's a friendly that put the rocks there to access the doorway but there's a doorway coming out into what you know, these are some of the things that just made zero sense when I was walking around there. Here's some glimpses of the 1999 reconstruction. I've linked a few websites below so you can do more research into it. But this is the uh, refurbishment that was done in the late 1990s. Now, I'll bring it back to 1920 again, and we're going to focus straight in on the building that is below and next to the, I'm going to call it the spire for a better term. And I do want you to notice there that... The line of earth goes through and cross-secs one of the windows. And I think, that, well, that's not a very fortified position. If I can walk up and literally walk through your windows there, just saying. And a little bit wider view for you here. There is a window. There wasn't a window. They bricked it up. Something's disappearing. There's a few things that are bizarre about this as well. We'll walk you through it. Now, this is actually in the museum when you walk inside and they show the fortifications in the interior of the spire. And they even show you that strange rock formation that goes right up into the window there. But I will bring you back to 1824 and what do we see? I see three straight windows with no debris under it. And also I see clearly that four floor building is far below those windows where, where the excavation is now. So something had happened in that period as well from 1824 to 1929. Another mishap perhaps. The ice flows came through. The 1500s, they're rebuilding. This place is a magnet for resets, I do believe. And if we look at the schematics of the rock around or the substrate or the mud flow or again, liquefaction of some sort on a thrust that would have sent this rock straight in there and there's no way they can really take it out. Because you're not, if you had builders, you would actually have them cut the rock flat around the structure. To have this building technique is, it makes zero sense. And you can see other windows in the beginning of there around that uh, curvature as you enter the main gate of the castle. And going back in time, there's different lithographs. This is, looks to be about from 1750. You notice more of the onion dome type of uh, tops of the, the structures here. We see this again. Things are just a little bit different than what they are like today. And if we come into 1805, I do believe, 1820, this one. You can see that there was a change from the 1700s and then suddenly there is the, the windows are covered by some sort of upthrust fault. Was it a flood? Something happened to this place that's visible through time in this much debris that is still deposited. This is in the early 1980s, just before they were starting the renovations that were really getting underway in the 1990s. So let's step inside the castle because I thought this was absolutely amazing here. The door archway. The craftsmanship on this takes us well back. So again, you know, you start to get mismatched. A, building techniques, but the stonework on this is absolutely, you know, in a league of its own. It, just look at the stonework of this. There's nothing else like it anywhere. This is an anomaly within this anomaly. So you start to see layers of anomaly. Oh, speaking of which, this is the main gateway through up from the outside where you would drop the gates up into the courtyard but they left this giant stone. Like you have all these workers that couldn't flatten that stone, that they just left it in the wall there. See, some things make zero sense. You had the manpower and labor, and I don't care if it took a year with two guys with chisels, get it done, I'm the king, get the rock out of the way. We need wagons coming through here, we need every square inch of space, but no, they leave a huge rock right in the way and build it into the wall, would you do that? I don't think so. But I'll take you to some stained glass here, Harold. We were looking at the wolf, the lion, and again, this is ancient times, ancient information is truly the time we're given the correct building dates. Because what you're seeing here with this stone is not that gate I showed you. It's a replica. It is a newer version of the build versus that perfect. It reminds me of something we'd see down in South America, the prior. But the heraldry here is astounding. How do you have so many mythical creatures on one side of the family's rulership lead this information's encoded in history. It's here for us. So I'm saying somewhere around the 1550s, there was a massive reset of sorts that required rebuilding here and digging out. Something else happened in 1830s that required or added to the tumultuous, continuous dig out process. 
And I am asking you, are we at the galactic cross once again? Because I see not Christian deities in front of me. I see Jupiter and Saturn and some sort of electromagnetism slash Birkeland current into our Earth. You would be protected from the church, encoding the information right here. And what is that orb and globe with an antenna or energy harvesting device sticking out of it? So we have another point on the map. We have another time that we can generally say something large happened and reset. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please leave your comments in the comment box below and share, subscribe, tell others about it so they can join the conversation too. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.